Uh, so thanks for inviting me here. So those great talks, so I try to be as good as them. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the, my talk is about uh, kind of in a reinforcement learning side, so it might be a little different from what's been so far. <clears throat> but actually, it's connected to the other concepts talked here. So the title is a bit long, but the main thing is that um, in deep learning, it kind of works very well, but it works well because you have this uh, structure uh, embedded into the, the architecture itself. So it, it works, works very well on uh, 2D structures like image video, and that's because the convolutional network is uh, built with the, uh, the prior information about the input. And same with the sequence. Uh, you have a recurrent neural network, and all those uh, networks are, in case of convolutional network, uh, it, uh, it knows that the, the image is translation invariant, and it also uh, knows that image has this locality in two-dimensional. The same is true for the sequence. It, if you shift the sequence, it should be processed in the same way. And in the sequence, you, you, you don't want to have a fixed length sequence, so you, because sequence could have different sizes, so you want to you know, we want a model that can handle those features. Um, okay, so we have a model for grid, uh, 2D structure and 1D structure. <coughs> Maybe that's probably enough, but what about uh, set? So uh, in a set, we could have a, so like if you have a playing poker and we have a five cards in our hand, and that's not a sequence, that's not a, that's not the image, so it's actually set. And uh, also if you have, what if, what if you have a like set of facts in your data input, how you process them? So this is a question, and we don't have a, like a model that can handle them at the time, so now we have. Uh, so the set, the, the properties we want here is that the set has a permutation invariant. So this is a very important property here. It doesn't have a, it, it's not the same with the sequence. So when you shuffle the things, you should still get the same output from the model. Um, also, it would be nice if it can handle the dynamic sizing. So if, if it can handle like set of size of four and five and so on. So we don't want a model for only for like two elements. Um, about output, you, we can have a single output from the set, or we, maybe we want output for each of elements. Okay, so this is a very nice motivation, um, but in truth, like we actually didn't start with that motivation. We had uh, some other motivation, which was about multi-agent communication. So uh, it might not make sense, like how is that connected to set, but if you think about it, when you have a multi-agent, you can think them as a set. So you have a, fi a five agent playing soccer, then you have a set of five agents because they, they don't have a, any specific ordering on them. And uh, well, I, I think like we can expect to have you know robots playing you know soccer and working in factory in you know in the near future if it if we you know keep making progress this uh, fast. So like playing StarCraft and and. Eventually, okay, let's say we have a autonomous cars driving around, and then what we, it will be nice if they can communicate with, with, each, with, with each other. So if they are doing something uh, collaborative, collaborative, then communication should help, their, help them. Um, so when we start with this idea, so okay, we, you know, communication is, you, how we humans communicate is it's a discrete word, so maybe, it has to communicate through discrete words. Uh, but if you try to do that in reinforcement setting, it's really hard. So uh, it's like uh, putting you know, two babies and expect them to come up with language, discrete language. And I don't know if anyone has done that experiment, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think that will work out. Um, because in language, we, we learn them from our parents, we have, you know, we have imitation learning and everything in there. So, so learning discrete words is kind of unrealistic assumption. So why not we just say that, okay, we, we let them allow to communicate through a continuous vector. So that's the advantage with, with uh, those models. They have, they're very good with this continuous thing. 
uh, unlike humans, we can't, we can't send a vector to other people. Uh, it will be very hard. Um, uh, so yeah, that was the, the main idea. Let's use uh, continuous vectors for communication. And that essentially allows us to train very efficiently. Um, okay, so the, 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 the model we came up is that, uh, so to, so that, it, so this is the simplest thing model that is a permutation invariant is, let's just process each set independently with the same network. Um, yeah, that is, a, uh, that is a permutation invariant. So if you shuffle these three elements, you will get the same results in the end. But the, what missing is that, you know, they are being processed independently. So maybe they need some information from other elements to uh, output its input. So let's add this communication channel that allows them to communicate with, with each other. And for now, we are only doing broadcast communication. So it means like, uh, it's not like you're, you're talk, it's not like one-to-one -one communication. It's like you're just, uh, uh, screaming in a room, everyone is screaming, and so there's like only a single uh, channel that you can use. And we don't say like how, what you, what they, what they each element should communicate or what they, how they use this channel. We just let them use, figure it out. Uh, so this paper was uh, in 2006, NIPS. So in, yeah, in deep learning terms, it's very, very old by now. So. Uh, Okay, so our model, uh, it's, it's, it's just a bit more fancy picture. It, there, so we have a four set elements. So when we say each element has a stream, so we're just saying that this element is processed by its own, some kind of neural network, multi-layer neural network here. Um, but the communication is uh, added, and that is this red line. So what it essentially saying is at each layer or each hop, each, each element, uh, we take the, the representation of each set and add them together. So addition is very nice because it's a, it's a permutation invariance operation. So we add them together and send this average representation back to the, the all the elements. So that's it, it's a very simple idea. So, we, so at the next layer, the, the set element is, uh, getting two different types of input. It obviously gets uh, the, 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 its previous uh, hidden representation, uh, like a multi-layer neural network, but we have this additional input uh, C, C, uh, uh, C vector that has this uh, communication vector in it. And there's the, so we feed that into the next layer and the next, each this block can be just uh, some kind of one layer neural network. Um, so the, the, so this process, whole process can be, uh, is differentiable so we can train with the back propagation and don't worry about anything going wrong. Um, so that's the model. So, in the, in, in the, so this is the, the each, I'm showing the each block itself. So we are coming, uh, the, the set is uh, getting its previous representation and uh, the, the oncoming, incoming communication vector. So you multiply them, pass it through some linear transformation, each of them, and add them together and apply the, the, some kind of nonlinearity. And that's the simplest thing you can do here. Um, so, depending on if you if you say those those weight matrices will be same for every layer, what you're creating is a recurrent version of this model. But if you say they can be different, you have a multi uh, just feed forward network with many many parameters. So yeah, we have well, like, we can have a LSTM version of this or feed forward version of this, uh, which we can see which, which we will comp compare later in the tasks. Um, okay, uh, so, so we can take it, it as like as each element being processed by its stream, mod, own model, and being sharing this thing, or we can think it as a just we have this one giant model, uh, and that takes all the input of the set and outputs the set. Uh, so that's another 
way to view this model. Then it's just one giant uh, feed, uh, feed forward network, except this, the, the, the weight matrix is, uh, has some certain structure. So if, if we allow this uh, weight, the, the linear layer in this giant model to be anything, uh, we would have, um, we would have you know, too, many, too many parameters and it wouldn't be a permutation invariant. So what structure we are putting is that the, that this, uh, the linear layer should have a, a block, on the diagonal it should have a block matrix H so that would be that would correspond to the processing the each stream and for other off diagonal you have the block the same matrix C for processing incoming communications. So you can see this 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 matrix is a permutation invariant matrix and also you can change its size any way you want. So you can have size of three by three or five by five. It it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, but then like, okay, we have this model and we looked more closely and we found out there's actually something called graph neural network and, uh, and actually our model is just a graph neural network. So it's a bit disappointing to find out that. <laughs> but <clears throat> so what's happening is the set, it's a set, so it doesn't, it looks like a graph, but if you connect those elements and make a complete graph, that's, uh, that's a graph. So you have a complete graph, and you, you'll be, what you're doing is just feeding this complete graph to some graph neural network. But more I think about, okay, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe everything is graph neural network anyway, so <laughs> why not, why worry about that, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, we had a lot of talks here. So the graph neural network was first proposed in like 2005, and but only being recently being really uh, being you know used applied in deep learning, uh, it's really exciting to see this uh, uh, trend. And so we had talks about applying it to molecules and some giant uh, network. And we also have people are trying different versions of it where you kind of gates the communication between nodes, or kind of have some kind of attention over incoming communication. So attention is very good because. Previously, it was kind of broadcast communications, like everyone screaming in one room, but that's not really efficient. So the attention allows that okay, I will only attend to this person's talk, and you attend to other other person's talk. So what can happen is like, you know, many simultaneous pair-to-pair -pair talk can happen in this version. And also, like, we had this uh, paper also in in this new, this year's uh, NIPS uh, called Deep Sets. It's also a, a model for processing sets. So uh, it's being, it's getting a lot of attention. Okay. Um, so, but the other side of our project was the multi-agent communication. So on that side, there's a, also a lot of papers coming out recently, uh, but I wouldn't go through details here. But basically, what happens is most of those papers are interested in, okay, can we make them communicate in human language? So that's a really interesting topic. So they want you know robot to communicate in human language, so maybe you know human can understand what they're planning. You know, are gonna take over. <laughs> so yeah, if they're communicating in vectors, it's really hard to say. Okay, uh, okay. So we have this model. Let's test if it's really you know works or not. So we have come up with this toy task where you have a set of five numbers. Choosing between one between one or five hundred, uh, and the task is so you have this set, but you have to just map it to one, two, three, four, five, um, and it sounds very simple, uh, but it's you need the communication between these elements because you, if you map uh, each each number to some fixed number, there's always going to be overlap, so you don't want overlap. So we tested on it, of course, so if you don't have a communication, it's only successful at the 60% of the time. But if you allow communication, so those five numbers can say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm gonna pick the number two, so you, other people don't pick this number two. And so they're doing that, and they kind of solve the problem. And it's interesting to see what the embeddings of those uh, numbers, so we're not, 
when we feed the number, we're just feeding the text of it, or it's like we have embedding for each number. So, but they, they kind of figured out, you know, those numbers are some kind of continuous thing. So the embeddings arranges itself in this very nice uh, figure. Okay, but this was uh, kind of just make sure that everything is working properly. It doesn't say, you know, anything else. Uh, also, we tried uh, experimenting. So, well, but not, another task you can think of on set is you have a set of words, and it's supposed to be some sentence, but you don't know which, what kind of sentence is it. So, it's a back to sequence problem. So, we give a bunch of words, and we expect the model to create a sentence for us. And we compared our uh, model to some, uh, the five gram very simple pro uh, model. And the, it turns out, yes, we, uh, uh, we can kind of solve this problem with less error, which is nice. Uh, but we didn't really compare to other um, model, neural network or other deep models here. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so is it only way to process set? So only way to process set is that just to add them together and you know expect to solve this problem. But uh, actually, no. There's another approach to handle set. So you might have heard about the memory network, but it's it's kind of a model that has an external memory. So you have it's kind of core controller module. You can think of it as a, like a LSTM thing, or then you have this outside memory. And this in, in, in outside this memory, you can put anything you want. Uh, well, set. So you kind of put a set of vectors into it. And this model can read those sets and process it. So it's a very different approach from what we've what we done with the communication thing, but it it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's also works for set. So how does it work is that you have a controller module uh, sending this addressing signal to the memory, so it says, like, I, wanna, I want this kind of information. I want to you know, know the president of USA or something. And then the memory, and it, reads, uh, it kind of goes through the memory and reads back the relevant information from it. And it's, we allow it to do it multiple reads, so maybe it has to connect things to get the output. So the main component is that when you have this addressing signal, which is just vector, so we have this vector coming, and we have also a set of vectors sitting in the memory. And if you take the dot product between them, it kind of knows the similarity between the, what you have and what you ask to do. So, but you have to, to make it more like probabilistic, you pass it through softmax, now you have these numbers uh, over the, the, the memory vectors so this can be but like a, like a, like a this is like a attention weight so it's telling which part of the memory or like which element i want i'm going to read from the memory and once we have the weights uh, we also add them together the, we add the memory vectors with weighted by this attention and that goes back to the that goes back to the the controller so you can see we we still have this addition here which makes this whole thing permutation invariant. So addition is necessary thing, uh, but we're just adding this attention before it. Um, and it's, it's interesting to compare those, those two approaches. So you, on one side, you have this memory network, but it has this kind of central controller and sequentially you know, looking at the each settlement and outputting just single output. On the other, other hand, is we have this communication network uh, that kind of where like each set is, has all, its own processor, so it's kind of distributed. You can say it's probably like distributed processing, but they are like they they allow to send bits to each other through some network. Uh, so we have this centralized or de decentralized two approaches to this problem. Um, so we compare them on this uh, task called baby uh, it's, it's 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 a abbreviation for uh, so I know the a, a and I stands for artificial intelligence <laughs> yeah uh, so it's a, it's a very toy task it's not natural language it's a, so you can see it's, it's generated by some algorithm 
but the, the, the main task is you have this kind of small toy story and there's a, this question, find the answer. So like someone walks into the kitchen. So the question is, where is the apple? So you look up the apple. Okay, there's an apple. So Sam dropped the apple. Uh, so we have to, so okay, where Sam was, where was Sam? So we look up the Sam and we know that Sam walked into the bedroom. So we know the apple is in the bedroom. So it kind of <clears throat> tests this reasoning. And, uh, but the nice thing is we have 20 different types of reasoning in this task. Uh, so, but there was a other paper showing that all those tasks are actually just uh, tasks on like a graph. So they, they might not be the version of the testing. But so we did this uh, task. So in case of memory network, uh, we, what we, just, we just take the, each sentence of the story, put them into the memory, and ask the question, the feed the question into the controller, and we expect the question in the end. Uh, but in the ComNet, we process each sentence by its own stream, but the question is kind of sent through the, the communication channel. So everyone knows what the question is, and they have to talk to each other and give me an answer in the end. So because we have a single answer in the end, we, want, we simply add the, the, the representations in the end and get a single answer in the end. Um, OK, so this is the, the, the results. So what happens is that the memory network be, uh, was the best, well, better compared to ComNet. But it's not the best model. There, there was other paper that actually by uh, Mikhail Hanef that solves all the tasks. But at the time, yes, the memory network was, uh, well, not even at the task, but it was good. But it's understandable because the memory network itself is inspired by this task and kind of made, for, made to work for this task. But it's surprising that the communication also solves this, uh, most of the tasks. Uh, so in a memory network, because you have attention, you can see what's happening inside the model. So if you just look at the attention weights, in this case, so the question was, where is the milk? So, so the model, I think, looked for the word milk. And so it attended to the first two uh, sentences, because both of them had milk. But then it figured out, OK, the second one happened, the, last, the most recent fact. So it attends on the second fact. Now it knows John has the milk. So in the next hop, it attends, it looks for the word John. And it, it, now it knows that John was in the hallway. So that's how it, so we, cannot, we, have, we can know what is happening inside the, uh, the, the model, which is uh, very inter interpretable and nice property of the memory. But for communication, it's really hard to say what's happening. Um, so, OK. Uh, but we're not giving up. So the, the main motivation was uh, the multi-agent thing. So let's do the multi-agent thing now. As uh, we have a set of agents, each observer observing its own surroundings, so they have different uh, observations. And in the end, at each time step, it has to output some action. So it's a mapping from set to set. And I, so I have to say that it's a collaborative task, fully collaborative task. So it has the same objective. Uh, it only works in that case for now. Um, and we use this policy gradient for uh, training the reinforcement algorithm. But it's just gradient descent, same gradient descent we're doing here, except it's through this, except it's through the action, because action is a uh, discrete variable. We can't take a gradient, so we have this, there's this trick to com uh, compute the unbiased estimate of the gradient. Uh, uh, it's called the policy gradient. And there's some other tricks to reduce this uh, variance of this estimate. Um, so the task we considered was, OK, we, let's say we have these cars work on a road, on a junction. And it's because it's a future, we don't have a traffic lights. And all of them are autonomous. Uh, but they have to communicate with, with, with each other so they wouldn't collide. So, and also we assume it's like very, very foggy day, and you don't see anything. So you're going blind. Uh, you, only information you're getting is this communication thing from other cars. Um, and the, and so the cars come and go, so the number of cars is changing, but we have some kind of limit on it. Uh, so 
obviously, if you don't have communicate and you're blind, uh, you, you would have a lot of collision. That's, that's kind of obvious. Uh, but let's allow them to send discrete symbols. Uh, so you, kind of, you can uh, compute the gradient for discrete variable through the same reinforced technique, but it doesn't really work well. So it uh, doesn't really work well. Uh, also, what if you just take a giant neural network, fully connected neural network, and takes the control of all the cars? But that doesn't also work because it doesn't know the permutation invariance. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we, get, we got what the, the result we expected. That was nice. Um, right. Um, so. Yeah, let's, so this is another harder version of, now we have four, uh, four junctions, uh, so it's a little harder. And uh, now we can try, we can some, try something like, you know, you only communicate with nearby cars. So, so but uh, let's see the actual, um, the, the, the agent. Okay, so this is the before training, so you can see this. It's, it's changing the color uh, that's, well, well it, it, the change of color is just breaking. So it allows it to break, but when it becomes excess, that means it's collided. So now it's trained, so you can see it doesn't really break. Uh, it's kind of crazy, but doesn't also collide. So it's really <laughs> magical. So they just go through and find the, find the, uh, so this is the harder version. Um, so they have like still small visibility around them. Okay, so before training, they just, it's a chaos. You're just colliding with everyone. Um, I have to tell that each car has its own specific route. So it just follows the route. Um, so after we train this thing, and so you see it doesn't stop. Uh, very rarely it breaks. So this is hopefully, you know, a solution to the, like traffic jam or other problems uh, will be very scary for people <laughs> inside those cars. <laughs> um, so I say this is just a graph neural network. Um, but interesting thing is happening the, here. Well, if you look at this, uh, the, the graph itself and like sh see the whole episode, what's happening is we start with some three or cars, but some car leaves and new cars coming in. So the graph itself is looks where very different. So the graph it's, is changing its shape at every layer. So this is something you can do with graph neural network. It doesn't. It does work very fine. Uh, it works fine. So it's not that it's not changing the graph for every input. It's changing the graph at every layer. So this is something I think is interesting to note. Um, so, okay, so we were interested in, okay, they're communicating, they're solving this task, but how are they solving it? So let's look at the, the messages they are sending to each other. So because it's a vector, we can't look at them. So we, what we did the PC end and the, looking at the 2D plot of it. So we can see this communication vector is mostly at zero. So this is that big blob is around zero. So it's, it's saying that mostly you don't say anything because, you know, you, so you keep silent, but sometimes you say something and those things are kind of clustered. So we can interpret them as some, some kind of word. So what those ABC words means, uh, so we're just comparing this to the, the representation itself. So the, the hidden representation is not actually collapsed to zero. It does have some information in it. It just doesn't communicate that information to the other agents. <clears throat> so, so those, so those uh, words actually mean something. So for example, that word A is used by this, that the, the, the car at the blue location to inform the cars at the red location to break. So we kind of did the simulation of two cars and like what did happen. So blue car, when blue car is at that location, it says, okay, if you're there, please break. <clears throat> and the other words are kind of used in similar manner Okay, I'm at this location. If you're at that location, break now. So we wouldn't collide in the future. It's really different from how the traffic works in reality, but it's interesting uh, traffic rule. Um, 
So we, so we here plotted the brake locations. So you can see the car coming from the left side never brakes. So it's, it it's just goes through and it says the other cars to brake. And, and, but the other directions has a, uh, so, uh, have to break. Uh, so, and this is the, the, the norm of the communication uh, vector. So you, you kind of see there's this bright spot. That's where the, the agent speaks up. Uh, okay, so that was the one task. And then we did another task like inspired by StarCraft. So let's have a team of uh, team of uh, these uh, dots agents uh, fighting these enemy units, and you can only see your small neighborhood, and you can sh only shoot in this small uh, range. And so what you have to do is like find first find the enemy bots, and it's better if you come together and kind of sh kills one by one. So that will be good strategy to find. Um, so if you, if you don't have a communication and if each agent just acts independently, that, that doesn't really work. Uh, so the, the, having a communication uh, definitely helps. And we kind of see that LSTM is uh, works very well, but doesn't mean it's because of the, the, it's because of the memory. The LSTM has a memory. In, in, in this case, so that gives obviously a big advantage. Um, yeah, so this was a, so, we, so in summary, we have this uh, distributed neural network model uh, that can take a set and output uh, also set uh, values. And <clears throat> we show that it doesn't, the communication is actually ends up being sparse. Uh, so, but what about features? So we only considered uh, where agent has this single task, so like just trying to solve the single objective, but, but in real life, when cars are going around, they have each own objective, so they want to get to their destination fast, and they don't want to collide. <clears throat> so it would be nice if we find a way to generalize this to uh, non-fully cooperative setting, but it's tricky because if it's if it's they're not non-fully cooperative, why would you you know uh, send the continuous vector to your other agent, and why would you send the, the gradient back? You know, so it's 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 something uh, strange to think about, and also it would be interesting. So we have this two centralized or decentralized approach, which would works best in what kind of problem? So that would be interesting, I think, to figure it out. Uh, so, so thanks for the attention. Oh, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> hang. On. These are my. Yeah. So yeah, those are to my collaborators, Arthur and Rob, is at my advisor at NYU. <laughs>